Yo, what's going on, my fellow gamers? Gideon here in Romancing Saga Reuniverse. This is my guide to getting through floor 30. I have also included floors 27 through 28 and 29. There are timestamps in the description below for ease of navigation. Now let's get to it. Floor 27. Okay, so... Like I was saying, basically with these first floors, um, they're not the main ones that I'm focusing on, but you will kind of see how I got through them. I don't know if you're struggling. I'm assuming maybe you're looking for the answers if you haven't got through it at this point. I found that 27, 28, and 9 weren't actually as bad as floor 30 which is probably quite obvious. Uh, some of these monsters, for the most part, what you're looking for is low to no resist on the debuffs or the jammers, or jammings, whatever it's called. So basically, and this will be in the description as well as a quick reference. However, on floor 27, you want to simply paralyze the the demon things the knuckle of these or whatever they're called and take out the ninja guys as fast as possible the knuckle of these are susceptible to paralysis which is the stars spinning around their head as you can see that i have done right now and they can also be stunned, which is the blue spiky resistance on the table. Those are the two main abilities that I like to take advantage of. Another thing that is super useful in 27, 28, 29, 30 is the blunt damage resistance. A lot of the monsters do hefty blunt damage. And that'll become apparent as we go along. However, initially, you can also see here that my strategy is mostly based around Emerald. I'm in the Seer formation. Uh, obviously, that's not the only formation. I've been told even this party composition isn't even that conventional, so... I have no idea how optimal I might have been or not been. At this point, my team has both events under their belts. I use the characters like Sophia and Emerald. This is almost pretty much the main team that I run regularly. There will be some slight changes throughout, but this is pretty much it. And this formation features at least one two paralysis with, with um, Hector's blunt strike he's taking a nap Emerald's flame whip and then there I believe there is a, a stun in there another thing that I utilize especially on the rounds where I am not equipped to take care of the certain debuffs that may be required I use the strength down debuff like from the bone crusher attack pretty uh, generously so if I have multiple characters that have a strength down I like to spread the wealth out make sure each of the enemies that uses you know, direct damage or strength-based melee, melee type hits. I like making sure their strength is down. And preferably, I will, as you can see what I'm doing here, I spread out the paralysis. So I'll have flame whip on one target, blunt strike on another target, and then use the stun interrupt and focus down with just straight damage on... In this case a third target however just always try and prioritize especially in these early stages 27 28 29 this this all goes out the window for 30 so again if you're here for 30 
I just included all these other stages as a bonus, as I know this last bit of the tower can be a bit of a slog. So this also just kind of gives you a visual of the thought process of what I'm going through to get through it. And I also do it kind of slowly, look at the different monsters so you can see what the resistance is, uh, give a bit of a breakdown of my party, and move on. So in this particular case, we have it geared. My focus jamming is stuns, paralysis, strength down, and Emerald is my my big damager. She generally is in most situations, uh, even the ones that don't necessarily call for copious amounts of fire magic. However, I've found she's uh, gotten pretty powerful and I've put some work into her. So again, I may be overpowered for a couple of these stages, underpowered. However, we'll get to stage 30 when we get there. So I pretty much have this floor 27 under wraps. And yeah, just pay attention. Again, I'm going to supplement anything that I'm saying here with a, a quick breakdown in the description. Other than that, this is, uh, this is what we're doing. So 27 is almost done, and we will check out 28, 29, and of course, 30. So, oh, there we go. Victory! Floor 28. All right, so I am using the same team as Floor 27. Floor 28 features Plesiosaurs and Resentful Dead. Resentful Dead can be stunned, they can be petrified. Those are the two main resistance that you want to focus on. The Plesiosaur can be pretty much everything, immune to charm and high resistance to stun, but you can paralyze it. So in this case, I'm going to focus on paralyzing the Plesiosaur and damaging down the undead as much as possible, as fast as possible. I think Floor 28 was very easy for where I was at with this group. This group is around 21,000-ish CP, and in this configuration, fire damage on the undead, easy paralysis on the dinosaur, so... Yeah, it wasn't too bad, pretty straightforward. If your team kind of looks like mine or has similar power, you probably shouldn't have too much trouble with Floor 28. I don't really have a lot to say about it other than keep the dinosaurs paralyzed. Once it's paralyzed, remember, you generally have four turns to figure out what you're doing or get your big damage overload attack ready. So, uh, one thing I do like to do, do like to do, is if I have the monster paralyzed, it's the last monster, I'll use just some normal attacks to slowly burn it down to build up the BP and build up towards an overdrive combo. That's something I, I add in regardless of the strategy with jamming, immunities, damage focus, etc. Is I like building up to uh, overdrive whenever I can. And I think that's pretty much all I have to say about Floor 28.
floor 29. Okay, floor 29 was a little trickier. I was able to do it with my same seer focus combination, same heroes, same styles. Took a couple attempts. The Medusas are a fairly brutal enemy. They have a wicked charm with their gaze attack. And the problem with the gaze is it does a lot of damage anyway, so if it doesn't kill your hero outright, they will be charmed, and the charm is fairly long-lasting in terms of these combats. I think it's a four-turn charm at least. Uh, four or five, four for sure. I can't remember what it says in the tooltip. However, it can be very bad if the wrong person gets charmed and they make quick work of their comrades. So, same idea applies. You can paralyze Medusas, so I try and jam them up. And then I do the damage down focus on the little winged scythe wielding angel uh, monsters. And other than that, it's the same, same thing, except there's a bit of RNG. You can maybe at this point build some resistances towards being charmed. Uh, if you can, I'm definitely not optimally set up for that. Uh, this isn't even... You could probably even use a different formation. Uh, when we get to floor 30, I'll be using a different formation. Uh, so anyway, but at this point, yeah, this wasn't optimal. It took like two attempts to get through, but this team and this configuration did it. Again, just paralyze what can be paralyzed, damage down what can be damaged down. And I think that's about it, and hope for good RNG with the gaze. Oh, and again, blunt resistance is super helpful for a lot of these fights. Yeah, the second round with three Medusa is probably the most challenging part of this floor. So just try and get them as paralyzed as fast as possible and destroy them in the order which uh, you paralyze them first, second, third, so it, you know they don't unparalyze and then hit you with a nasty gaze attack. And the more heroes you use that can paralyze, with that interrupt, then the better off you are. I think there's also a couple other resistances. I forgot to double check. I might not have scanned them there. But uh, regardless, that's all, uh, all I did to get through that one. So next up will be Floor 30.
floor 30. Okay, this is the floor you've all been waiting for. And if you skipped right to it, I don't blame you. So, I changed up my team for this formation. I replaced the tank with Albert from whoever that guy was, Gerard, and changed my martial artist to Kat from, uh, how do you say her name, Ayami, I think that's it. Anyway, could be wrong. Uh, this formation, this strategy is based around Emerald as your tank. Desert Lance or Rising Phoenix both work for what the intent and purpose is. I prefer Rising Phoenix and that is where I found my success. This strategy is by no means foolproof. I found that I might have even been slightly underpowered to pull it off. Maybe I was just about right. There's RNG involved. It's full manual control. But it's a little different than what I think is currently out there. This one may be out there. As I've said in Reddit posts or somewhere else, I just like to try and figure all this stuff out on my own. I will, I will very rarely get stuck and go and look up how to do something. I can imagine there are definitely other ways, better configurations to do this. And like I said in the comments down below, uh, if you've beat Spiral Floor 30, please by all means let me know what you did to get through the final floor. So, how this is working, and my first attempt at this, uh, I had bad RNG and Emerald died really early. The only reason I switched to this particular Albert is I wanted to use Fairy Glow to boost Emerald's agility, and all you want to do is use her self-immolate spell. She's in the tank position for Rising Phoenix and should draw the attention mostly from these nasty, nasty pale nymphs. And as you can see, she responds with self-immolation on any direct attack on her. And these things pretty much just kill themselves, which is fantastic. And that's an easy way to get through this without having a whole bunch of other fire people on your team. Pale Nymphs have very strong amenities and resistances. They're not jammed up easily, if at all. And their only resistance, or their weakness, I should say, is fire. Fire Fire is at minus 55. They do insanely strong blunt damage. I have like over 100 blunt resistance on emerald with the gear i think it's about 105 i recommend having around 500 hit points i think she's just under 500 and yeah you just want decent agility as well so even if you're in a position that boasts higher agility as long as you can get the majority of the direct hits on her so she can get her self immolation off you should be able to easily get through the Pale Nymphs. It may take a couple attempts, because there is some RNG dependency. Rising Phoenix is a good formation, because it has will boost for your team, and that kind of helps with getting stunned through entanglement. So, overall, this was an alternative to me, another way that I think would work and was on the verge of doing is get a couple more fire specialists, Char, uh, Volcano, Miriam, or whatever the other fire mage girl name is. A couple of them have more favorable level style abilities for more fire damage, weakness exploitation, etc. Two or three of them could burn these nymphs down fast. I think the nymphs have around 10,000 hit points, give or take. Maybe on the high side, I've never actually calculated it directly. Just a bit of napkin math. They take two big hits and a bit of extra damage to get knocked out. So this is essentially your wall, is getting through these two rounds 
of two pale nymphs. After this, there is a iron forge, fire forge, some forge worm. And dragons I don't find are too bad. I believe his only major weakness is pierce damage. And I'm not using anyone with pierce damage. Yes, it is. However, dragons generally don't have super high resistances. Some of them do, I believe. I'm sure some will be worse. Uh, the blue dragons earlier in the tower aren't, didn't, I didn't find them too strong. These ones can be stunned. I'm doing my strength down like I talked about in the other floors. And this I will barely get through by the skin of my teeth. Unfortunately, I don't keep Emerald healed up. I believe I run out of healing. She gets taken out with a bad double hit and uh, the damage that I like to use from her doesn't take off. I don't get a good opportunity. And I get through this with just Sophia left. Second best girl. Emerald is number one, but uh, yeah. So this, this part of the fight could have gone better. In my original configurations, I think I ran it about maybe a dozen times just under. I was having trouble getting to this dragon with everyone alive because those two rounds of pale nymphs were way too much. But with this configuration, doing the self-immolation, it uh, got through them really quickly. I almost gave up on it uh, originally when I was trying it due to bad RNG. And then after talking with my brother who also plays this game, he gave it a try and had really good success. However, he, he prefers the Desert Lance formation for this one, and like I said, I like Rising Phoenix. So things are looking bad here, but Sophie is pretty powerful. Her direct hit, Bone Crunch, lower the strength, and she has over 500 hit points keeping it together, good physical resistance, and finishes it off. So, that's it there. Uh, basically, you want Emerald as your tank, self-immolation, get to the end, beat the dragon, hopefully lock it down, and that should get you through Spiral Floor 30. There's a few days left for this round before the reset. Don't know if it's going to completely change for the next Spiral Corridor. Uh, afterwards, I guess we'll find out. Other than that, I hope some of you at least found some use in this strategy video. And let me know if you want to see more. Leave me a comment down below on how you got through Spiral Floor 30. Give me some other combinations to try. And that'll do it. Like, share, subscribe, and thanks again. Keep on gaming.